In this video, we will learn how to write unit tests for our Spring Boot applications. Most importantly, we will look at the technical details necessary to write good unit tests. This video is the first one of the Spring Boot testing mini-series. In this video, we only discuss unit testing. We will discuss integration testing in the upcoming videos. Before we start, let's first define what we mean by unit testing. Unfortunately, there is quite a bit of confusion about the size of a unit. First, let's take a look at the definition of unit testing in Wikipedia. In object-oriented programming, a unit is often an entire interface, such as a class, but could be an individual method. Okay, so a unit could be hidden behind an interface, or it could be as small as a method. There is an important characteristic hidden here. We should not test the implementation, but the behavior that is exposed by the public interface. Here's another definition that was written by Michael Feathers in 2005. A test is not a unit test if it talks to the database, it communicates across the network, it touches the file system, it can't run at the same time as any of your other unit tests, or you have to do special things to your environment, such as editing config files to run it. If your test does any of these, it's an integration test. Some people think that integration testing means that you test the entire application, but that's not true. You could, for example, integration test your data access layer in isolation. Now that we have said that straight, let's talk about unit testing in Spring applications. Don't use Spring to write unit tests. Wait a minute. Where are we supposed to look at unit testing with Spring Boot? Indeed, but let's take a look at what a typical Spring Boot test looks like. Here is an order service that uses speed-based dependency injection. We have a couple of repositories here, and then we have a pay method that takes in an order ID and a credit card number. We first get an order from the repository by the order ID, and if it's not found, throw an entity not found exception. Next we'll check if the found order is already paid, and throw a payment exception in such case. Then we'll mark the order as paid and persist it. And finally we create a payment entity that takes in the order and the credit card number and persist and return that. Next we have a test annotated with a at Spring Boot test. So in order to be able to call the pay method of the order service, we first have to create and persist an order instance and we are making sure it's not paid. After calling the pay method, we are checking that the return payment instance has a paid order and has the correct credit card number. We are not checking if the entities were persisted to the database, but a test like this might typically do something like that. So what's wrong with a test like this? Well, this is not a unit test. When we use the add Spring Boot test annotation, Spring loads up an application context for the test. In practice, we have started the whole application only to auto-wire the order service and order repository into the test. Another problem is that we have to write orders and read them from the database. While this could be something that we want to do in the integration tests, it's not desirable in unit tests. Remember that we want to test the unit in isolation. So if we want to isolate the test from the database, and we are already familiar with Spring Boot and Mokito, we might ask, why not just annotate the repositories with at mockbean then? Well, we could do that, and it's something we can use in our integration tests. However, it's still going to be much slower than writing a plain unit test. Furthermore, every time we use at mockbean in our tests, Spring will create a new application context in the tests unable to use a cached version of the context. Having to create a new context adds to the overall execution time of the test. Here is a quote from Spring Framework documentation about unit testing. True unit tests typically run extremely quickly, 
as there is no runtime infrastructure to set up. Emphasizing true unit tests as part of your development methodology can boost your productivity. It takes about 5 seconds to run this locally. 5 seconds might not sound much, but unit tests are supposed to run in milliseconds. The execution time is not so bad with a small application, but the time goes up as your application grows. Ok, so if we cannot use at Spring Boot test, what should we do then? Let's take a look. Here is another quote from Spring Framework documentation about unit testing. The pochos that make up your application should be testable in JUnit or TestNG tests with objects instantiated by using the new operator without Spring or any other container. In the previous example, we had a service where we injected the repositories as fields. There's no way to pass the repository instances to the service if we instantiate with the new operator. The solution is not to use field injection at all. Instead, we should use constructor injection. So what we are going to do is to remove the at outer wired annotations from the fields and create a constructor that takes an order repository and a payment repository as arguments. When we provide a constructor with repositories as parameters, Spring will automatically inject those into the service. We can also make the repository fields final because there's no need for them to change. We can also reduce boilerplate code by using Lombok. When the class has final fields, using the Lombok at required args constructor will automatically create a constructor with those parameters. So now we can remove this manually added constructor. It's now possible to pass the repository instances to the service as constructor arguments. Now we can write a unit test for the service. We'll start by removing the at Spring Boot test annotation and the at Auto Wired annotations from our test. Since we don't want to touch the database, we are using Mokito to replace the actual implementations of the repositories with mocks. We can add a at before each method here that does this for us. Also, instead of processing the order into the database, we are not going to mock the calls that the service makes. So, in the service implementation, we can see that we are first trying to find the order by the ID. In the test, we can return a stopped answer for that call. Next, we know that the service should persist and return a payment entity. So, in our test, we can say that whenever we try to save a payment into the repository, that method should return the first argument given to it. Which is actually what the repository implementation would do but now we don't have to touch the database. The test now runs in milliseconds instead of seconds. We can further reduce boilerplate in the test code if we use the Mokito extension. We'll just annotate the test with at extend with Mokito extension dot class. Now all we need to do is to annotate the mock dependencies with at mock and the class where we want to inject those mocks with and at inject mocks. With quite a simple change, we managed to make the test independent of Spring. The test is now fast and isolating. If you'd like to learn more about different ways of using Mokito with JUnit 5, I previously made a video about that. Ok, that's it. Using at Spring Boot test for writing plain unit tests can be considered harmful because they run slow. It's pretty easy to make our components unit testable when we use constructor injection instead of field injection. In addition to unit testing, we should also write integration tests. In the following video of this mini series, we will discuss integration testing of our web layer of the application. Thanks for watching, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next video.